All right, let's do this. Uh, it's a Friday. I'm Roger Kincaid. Rob Breckenridge in studio with me as a well. Game. And a very big day as we welcome Jim Prentice, uh, the Premier of Alberta, keeping a promise that he made uh, very boldly on this radio station the last time we spoke, sir. So we're very grateful to have you back in, uh, this time in studio. Thanks so much for coming in. Well, it was a bold acceptance. To, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, you said that, I mean, uh, you'd be back in two weeks and that, uh, you know, stay tuned because it was going to be a very interesting two weeks. I think I kept my promise on, on that. Pretty well, sure about yeah. that. You, 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 you did, but uh, I will jokingly say that uh, you said we wouldn't recognize this place. I do recognize this place <laughs> as a province I once lived in. Now, uh, let me ask you this. It, it, it's been a week that we've been describing as you picking off the low-hanging fruit. Things like uh, getting rid of the government fleet, uh, this ending entitlement and, uh, entitlements and whatnot, plates. the license <laughs> plates and stuff. Uh, these were uh, predictable, also easy decisions, and things that really needed to be uh, done after the new premier was chosen. Uh, but there's one thing that is still uh, looming, and that is uh, 0.05 legislation. And I'm wondering if you have plans uh, to repeal that or get rid of 0.05 legislation. Well, uh, let me just deal with the past two weeks. Firstly, if, if, if I might, uh, Roger, the, the um, you know, some people have described it as low-hanging fruit. That, that That's fine. I mean, really what I've been doing uh, and our government's been doing is responding to what I heard over the summer from Albertans saying, okay, uh, we want a new government, we want leadership, and we want these things dealt with. And so, you know, the announcements that I've been making, including the one that will be made later this morning, uh, addresses exactly what Albertans have been demanding from the, from their government. So, I mean, people have referred to it as low-hanging fruit, that's fine, but but really, you know, this is the government acting on what Albertans want. In terms of point uh, zero five, you know, um, I mean, I, I would want to hear from uh, the chief of police of Edmonton and Calgary and uh, other policing authorities about what they think about that and uh, what the implications of changing this would be in terms of public safety and, um, you know, the, the lives of people on highways. In terms of um, when you're going to, to run for a seat and where you're going to run for right. a seat, we do now know the two your cabinet ministers are candidates in, in ridings. We don't yet know when those by-elections are going to be. When are we going to know, A, where you're running, and, and B, when these by-elections are going to be? Well, immediately. You know, that's uh, I, what I promised was there'd be two weeks of a substantive agenda to deal with the issues we just talked about. And then once that was done, we'd, we'd get straight into uh, ensuring that I'm elected to the Legislative Assembly. Uh, Gordon Dirks is elected and Stephen Mandel are elected. And so, you know, the by-elections are, are imminent. I'll just leave it at that for the moment. You but, can't tell us today? Can't tell you today. Or you but, can't tell uh, us where either? Um, I, I'm not, I can't tell you where today, but uh, they're imminent and uh, there'll be clarity on this immediately. Can you tell us how many there will be? Because there will be obviously the two for the cabinet ministers, one for you, but there are other potential sure, vacancies. I mean, there's, there, there's other potential vacancies, and um, you know we'll call them as, as required, but for sure there's going okay. to be um, at least three. The importance of getting you into the House to have a fall session, is it your priority that we have a fall session? And I mean, for example, we have the Privacy Commissioner raising concern that if we don't, by November 15th, we're going to run into issues regarding privacy legislation. So what kind of a timetable are we facing then? Well, I'm a big believer in, in the importance of our democracy, um, parliament, and our legislative assembly. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we prorogued the House. It's a terrible word, but we pr prorogued the House. It's become a dirty word. <laughs> it's hard to spell also. <laughs> um, we prorogued the House so that we can come in with a new throne speech, set the new uh, agenda for the government. And um, we've set the date uh, November 17 uh, as the date the House will start. And uh, what I've said is the legislative assembly needs to sit exactly the number of days it was originally scheduled to sit. It's going to crowd Christmas, at, you know, mm -hmm. at the other end, but that's fine. Uh, you know, Albertans are entitled to know that their democracy is is alive and vibrant, and there's going to be the same number of sitting days, and I'll, I'm sure that happens. The, the issue of uh, a sales tax came up this week. Uh, one of your ministers was commenting or, or musing about the possibility, and you, you yeah, were very was, quick. What was that about? <laughs> well... <laughs> I guess we we perhaps would ask you. You were very quick to, to come in and say that this isn't something that would happen on your watch, but there's a strong case to be made that, that sales taxes are the least damaging form of taxation, but it doesn't sound like it's something you want any part we're not, of. We're not looking at a sales tax, and we're not... Uh, I was surprised by the comment. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll speak with the minister uh, later today, but there's been... Um, no discussions uh, at Cabinet or at Caucus uh, since I've become the Premier about a sales tax. But why not? Uh, there has Well, I've heard from Albertans loudly and clearly that they don't think that that's the way forward. They, they want to ensure that the taxes that they're spending or, you know, paying right now are being spent properly and that they're getting, uh, you know, fiscal prudence from the government, that they're getting value for their money, that, um, you know, there's some downward pressure in terms of government expenditures. 
you know, they're not interested in paying more taxes. So you see really right now that, that Albertans, citizens and businesses are sufficiently taxed. They don't need to go up. They don't need to go down. We're, we're good where we are. Uh, well, I mean, clearly, as we as we move forward, you always have to look at government services, how they're being uh, costed, how they're being delivered, what, uh, you know, whether we're, we're achieving um, uh, cost recovery from services that are provided by government uh, agencies. I mean, all of that needs to be discussed. I simply make the point that there been, there's been no discussion about a sales tax and there's no plan to bring in a sales tax. Okay. Um, <clears throat> interestingly, that the other side of that story is whether or not you have these, your cabinet ministers and your caucus reined in to be making, you know, such comments without your approval. I mean, we we had an instance last uh, Friday uh, with respect to the Michener Center. Uh, there was a cougar shot and killed in this city. Clear. It's been very difficult for this particular radio station to have an ongoing conversation with the premier's office in the past couple of years, um, and that speaks more to the person who held your office prior to you. Um, but in all of that, in all the pettiness that went along with that, maybe on either side. Uh, there were questions from our listeners, our audience, saying, we believe that this is an outlet where Albertans should have access to the Premier, should get to have ask questions of the Premier and have conversations with the Premier. Can we try to have that relationship? Could we try to have an ongoing dialogue with the Premier? Uh, absolutely. I mean, if, if, if um, you know, here at, uh, at your station, you're interested in that, I'm very interested in that. And, um, you know, we, don't, we, we only have a certain amount of time today. Mm -hmm. But um, happy to come back, happy to engage in a discussion with your listeners. It's an important part of being accessible. I, like, I don't know what happened in the past in terms of uh, the challenges you had with the office. You don't need to deal with the office, deal with me. And, um, you know, I'll, I, I said two weeks ago I'd come back and try to be on your mm -hmm. show, and you've welcomed me, and I'm happy to come again. Well, we'd we would love to have you back, and we've only got about 30 seconds left here. So, And you got a, another announcement to make today. We make an announcement regarding uh, flood response. Well, as, as we just discussed, I mean, you're right here in the, the place that was affected by the oh, yeah. flood, uh, yeah. you know, and, and so you know how important this is, and so I'll be dealing with that uh, some of those issues this morning. Okay, well, we look forward to that announcement. We look forward to figuring out uh, which football team you cheer for, too. I don't know if you've got all the politics of this <laughs> province figured out yet, but the Stamps play the Lions tomorrow night. And we... the politics of sports are too complicated for me. All right, well, <laughs> when in doubt, cheer for the red and white, okay? <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Premier. Appreciate thank you. Thanks so much. much.